Welcome back to Batman Arkham Asylum. We actually just got done with a Vampire Survivors run. We did two on one episodes today. Two runs and one episode and the stages were fucking weird. I don't know if you've ever played that game and I cursed in the first minute. But, well, <laughs> it is what it is. But, um... The two stages that we played were... were Really lame, dude. So normally those stages are 30 minutes, right? So I planned my whole build around it being 30 minutes, and both the stages that we went to were 15. You know what happens when you plan a build for 30 minutes and you get 15? Jesus, that scared me. <laughs> well, let me tell you what happens when you plan a build for 15 minutes and you get for 30 minutes and you get 15. You don't have enough time to do the build you want to do. That's what happens. You have half the time. That's how math works. So our build is only half as cool as it could be, and I wasted all that time setting up. Surprise! You know, Bats, I always thought there was a spark between us. How did she actually jump like that? Why don't you just go get a gun and shoot the stupid Come on. Can I like some hit her? Nah. Did that hurt me, man? Hope so. Holy shit. Dude, that was bullshit. Let's throw this guy. We're not using our combos enough. We're getting all these juicy combos and we're not even utilizing all that juice. <laughs> Somebody needs to screenshot her just falling out of the sky. Let's upgrade. Mm. Let's do this one. I think this will let us get into uh, Riddler trophy places that we otherwise wouldn't be able to. And you know I'm all about them secrets, baby. Salvation. 
Yeah, so what do you do if your patient tells you that? I mean, like I said, man, last time, I just quit my fucking job. I moved to, like, another country. I moved to Thailand. Patient pacification system deactivated. Like, you have two options there. You either stand up and you kick the shit out of that patient's ass right there. The brink of death. Make it so that he can never walk or threaten you again. Or, you get the fuck out of there forever. You never come back. You go to Thailand and you're just like, it's over. But someone there is, is winning that dominance battle. Because that's what that was. I guess we're free to explore this area, huh? Let's take a quick look. See what we can find. We know we can uh, overload all this stuff. So the technique with these, right, is you basically do one joystick at a time. You do the left stick first or the right stick first, whichever one. Get it to its maximum strength and then you just spin the other one around. And, uh, you don't try and do them both at the same time, because then you don't know which one is affecting it, right? But you do one at a time, get the first one locked in, hold it in its maximum position, then you just spin the other stick around and you're good. Pro tip for you. Come on. That's not your fault, that's because your fucking friends- Oh shit! See, like this guy. I was gonna say, that's because your friend scared me. Now you scared me, fuck you. This is for you. This hand delivered for you, baby. I'm sure one of these is a riddle. But I don't know which one. Is it this one? No. It would probably show on the map, huh? But we don't have the map yet. We can't open up these. This is it. Calendar man fixated on the calendar. Julian Day became a calendar man. A villain who timed and tied his crimes thematically to certain holidays throughout the year, often leading clues by which he could be caught. Gotham City is kind of like the Zodiac Killer, I guess, who they never caught, right? Gotham City's hopes for a day off are often clouded by the knowledge that any holiday of note is likely to be shadowed by the calendar man's presence. That sucks, bro. You're just trying to, like, enjoy President's Day, then all of a sudden, the... Lincoln Monument explodes. Six foot three, 175 pounds. That's solid. He's definitely not stacked, but that's, you know, decent. Blue eyes, like everybody, and brown hair. Obsessed with quirks of the calendar, carefully plans, and themes crimes around holidays. Spooked here. I know it. Oh, I guess not.
I guess I'll hack these fucking things. So here we go, on the strongest. Oh fuck. Yeah, I understand, dude. So, you know, with our little strategy, it's actually not too bad. We can hack these really fast. We just have to find them. Are we stupid? Are you fucking kidding me? I thought I had a minute left. Bye bye, Bass. Dude, you piece of shit. You set up the rules of the game and then you break them. That's just bullshit. It's like that reminds me of those Saw movies, dude. Let's try this again. Oh my god, I'm a fucking dumbass. Okay, let's actually I think he's right. I'm gonna cut him down. Oh wow, he actually got shocked to death, huh? Hold on, Louie. That man will be Where can I get me one of those? Okay, so I guess we did just need to cut him down. Oh, I didn't even understand what I was supposed to be doing. Looks like Max right there. Ooh, this one's actually tough. I thought we were both gonna die in there. You're safe now. You going after that crazy witch? I saw her heading out of the door as we got out of the room. She won't get away. I'll stop her and then her boyfriend. Good. Listen, I'll go try and get the ventilation system working. If you find her, don't go easy on her. From me. First, let's go back in here. Why is it locked? What was that thing he used? No idea. He saved our lives. That's all I need to know. Patient's name is Victor. I think Zaz is maybe the most fucked up killer in uh, the entire game. Let's hack this thing. I don't really understand why we're hacking it because it's already open, but we're going to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. 
that might have been a hard one to find because on the map it would show up as being in that other room. So to find the entrance here is kind of uh, kind of tricky. You got to get lucky, or you got to have a <laughs> secret smell of nose like me. So I don't think we can reach the council from here. Nah, we'll have to come back. people, one voice, no gun. Two people, one voice, no gun. It's really not any of this? Hmm. Jesus, man. Scares me every time. Come on, keep up. Getting tired. Let me give you a little help. You're right on target, fat brain. Okay, before we go there, let's think about this. The clue is. Two people, one voice. Two people, one voice, no gun. No gun. Could it be up here? Ah, here we go. The ventriloquist. Arnold Wesker was a timid orphan whose deep repression erupted in a bar barroom brawl, resulting in him being sent to Blackgate Prison. Jesus Christ. For a barroom brawl. There he encountered the puppet Scarface and promptly murdered the man who'd carved the puppet. The two are now inseparable, with Scarface directing a series of criminal activities. While most believe that Wesker is simply acting out a second personality through the puppet, Wesker sees himself as a reluctant lackey who merely does his puppet's bidding. He's five foot seven, one forty-two. Not stacked, but proportionally, that's that's pretty pretty decent. He's got blue eyes, brown hair. Of course, he'd have blue eyes. Delusional, schizophrenic, with multiple personality disorder, obsessed with his puppet Scarface, whom he puppeteers with unsettling skill. When teamed with Scarface, the two operate as a criminal mastermind. Hmm. That's pretty cool. For that dude to jump out and scare me. I'm like, I can hear screams, but I don't see anybody. Where are the screams coming from? Dude, just fucking scare me already, you son of a bitch. What has four walls, two sides, and one XDA? Two face. District Attorney Harvey Dent was one of Batman's strongest allies in Gotham City, until a criminal threw acid in Dent's face, hideously scarring him. The wounds fractured his psyche, and he was reborn as a schizoid criminal mastermind, obsessed with duality. His former good luck charm, a two-headed trick silver dollar, was damaged on one side in the attack, and Dent has seized on it as a reflection of his half-scarred visage. He flips it to decide the fates of his victims. Despite, Batman, despite Batman's efforts to reform his former ally, Dent is consumed by his fixation on chance, and his crimes are designed to prove out his diametric philosophy. You know, I respect that. That's cool. Eyes blue, hair brown and gray, 6 foot 182 pounds. That's pretty stacked. 
Attributes, hideously scarred on the left half of his face, which he plays up with clothing that's differently styled on one side. Extremely skilled with his weapons of choice. Twin forty five automatics. Forty fives are hard to shoot, man. He's got two of them? That's crazy. Psychotic obsession with duality. Designing crimes around the number two. Defers to his half-scarred coin in choices of life or death. It's like No Country for Old Men. Have you ever seen that movie? <clears throat> How do we get in there? Well, I guess the, uh, the gates will probably open later, huh? Jesus, man. This really is a horror game. Victor has been more subdued recently. The spots the medication has been poor. Gotcha. Hello, Victor. Is there anything you'd like to talk about today? Gotcha. Victor! Gotcha. This is going nowhere. Gotcha. God! Gotcha. Get him out of here! You are the doctor. Get out. Gotcha. Did you hear me? Makes me fucking sick. Okay, so that gate's open, but first, I smell another clue, another secret. Oh, see, this is how we get in there. expecting the Joker to show up on the TV. Let's go ahead and blow up these walls. We know that there's a regular trophy down there. One of these. other ones though that we didn't quite notice is that just a clue because there's question marks in there that you're supposed to be able to get in This fight is actually a little more complicated. We have to keep our eye on the floor and make sure that when it's gonna turn on, we jump to another section. Just get the fuck up there, dude. Jesus. Man. 
I don't know if you guys saw that, but I punched. Batman just decided, oh, I'm going to punch the air. Jesus, where did he even come from? So this guy, you gotta jump over, right? You learn that. Okay. I'm not doing too bad now. Knock that fucking electric stick out of his hand. I guess it's a taser, huh? Start doing some instant takedowns. Oh, come on. I'm not about to be killed so close to the end of this section. Smiles next to certain names. You're the detective, you tell me. Dumbass. Oracle, I'm done. Harley is <laughs> subdued, and I have her prince dead. So you can find the secret lab in the garden. Yes. Harley's been everywhere on the island, so I'm calibrating the scanner to only show prints that have traces of chlorophyll. Okay, listen, be careful. I rerouted a Wayne Tech satellite to show thermal scans of the island. The gardens are showing up hot. Something bad is happening there. Okay, let's keep an eye out for that. Let's upgrade real quick too. And is it time that we upgrade our health? We haven't done that yet, but I kind of feel like a wimp doing it. Let's go ahead and do it. I think it wants us to go this way, but, ooh, ooh, no, we need to scan this. Alright, Victor Freeze was a brilliant cryogenist, cryogenicist, whose beloved wife Nora was stricken with a fatal degenerative disease. He placed her in suspended animation while obsessively searching for a way to cure her, but the corporation that funded his research and Nora's life pulled the plug, triggering an accident that transformed Freeze's body into a cold-blooded form that must always be kept below zero. At normal room temperature, he will die. Wielding a number of freezing weapons, he wears protective armor in his quest to somehow bring back his lovely wife and avenge her fate, which he partly holds the Batman responsible for. 
Six foot, he's 190, that's stacked. Scientific genius with a specialty in cryogenics employs an extensive array of cryoweaponry. His body has been permanently altered to survive at a sub-freezing state. Wears protective freezing armor whenever he's out in an above zero climate. Motivated by his grief and anger over the fate of his wife, Nora. Get over it. <laughs> Alright, so there's... There's a couple doors we can try, but let's go through this one first. Mm -hmm. That should help out a lot. The Riddler had nothing to say about that one. Normally he'll say some snarky shit. But he's got nothing recently. Let's head up here. Is this the last Victor's ass file? Did she answer the door? Who would answer the door? You'd look through the peephole, right? And if that was Zaz's master plan, was to just show up at her door and hope that she opened it? I don't think he's gonna kill her, man. I think that ended happy. I'm gonna be optimistic. We're not missing anything. No, 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 no. We're good. Grab this trophy. And we'll check in on Harley one last time. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Well, that's interesting. came and all swore to uphold our promises we all knew we were the ones to fix this city and the city would thank us we're lucky that Harley chose the one cell that had a fucking thin ass wall we could blow up Keep moving forward, baby. We keep it moving. Okay, some fucking psych is gonna jump out and scare us. I know it. So we're prepared for that. Ah! 
So to keep those guys from grabbing you, you have to counter right as they get to you. And so whenever I don't do that, that's when I get tackled and I have to like fucking throw them off. Who's just hiding up in that vent that goes to nowhere? How do you even get up there? <laughs> Jesus. I hit like every button. So that riddle that keeps popping up that says something about Zaz's work, well this is it. This is it, baby. You are beginning to impress me, Batman. You may still reach a level just below my genius one day. Let's head to the visitor center real quick. See if the Joker has anything else to say. The fastest way there is probably going to be this way, huh? Let's go straight across. Actually, we can probably get into this building now. Detective? 
All right. So that's really, you know, if, if the developers didn't put that in the game, these maps, it would suck to get the secrets. You'd have to go online, you'd have to find some fucking guide, or you'd have to actually sit here and search every little corner of the game. And that's no fun, man. But when they put a little map in, like that for each section, it really helps out. But let's wait till we have all of our um, all of our gadgets before we really start riddle searching. Dude, that fucking guy. Just for scaring me, bro. Eat shit. Fuck, you sound super close. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, man. Fucking hell. Let's head to the Botanical Garden. Should be just through those doors. You know, it, it does say there's a riddle back here. See, I'm already getting sidetracked. There it is in plain sight. Riddle shit. Jesus, man. So when I first played this game, I was on console, right? I played it on my TV. Now that I have headphones on, this shit is, like, much more shocking. This has to be a riddle. We got shotgun shells on the ground. We got a kind of fountain here. Dr. Wood 
You tried to kill everyone in Gotham. Well, sometimes you need to prove back hard in order to make something flourish. <sighs> I keep wanting to make Greta Thunberg jokes, man. But I feel like that's too easy. It's not even fucking funny. Let's go with battering power. That's actually really helpful when you're fighting. Cactus Gate. Okay, we're in a stealth section. All these dudes got guns, and there's a lot of them. See if we can grab this guy. No. We can grab him right here. Do we want to start with an inverted takedown? It seems like a waste, but let's do it. Oh shit, I was going to try and grab him. Saw me, dude. Hey, someone help that baby. All right, so we learned something. If you string someone up in a gargoyle, or I guess if you take somebody down, and you're near the person that got taken down on the gargoyles, the enemies are going to be looking up there. So instead of doing that, we'll stay a little bit farther away. I think you only get one inverted takedown per um, encounter too, so let's save it. Sometimes that's a nice way to just take somebody out. Let's see if we can take this guy out. So we know they're going to be looking at gargoyles. We don't want to fuck with them right now. These two guys are too close. Those two guys are too close. We have one sonic detonator that can take anybody out in uh, a single shot. Now this guy's alone. Let's see if we can do an inverted takedown on him before he leaves. Let's take one of these guys out with the uh, sonic battering. And now they should both be separated. I'm gonna glide kick this guy. Okay. 
Yeah, while this guy's running over here, I'll sneak away. And the last guy's always easy. Just fucking glide kick him or hit him with a batarang. Yeah, you're talking to yourself, buddy. Holy shit. That was almost really bad. that riddle and if I remember right we should have everything we need to solve it right now but I don't really remember where it is hmm here it is Obsessed from a young age with Lewis Carroll's book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Jervis Tetch, an expert hypnotist, embraced a delusion that he was the incarnation of a character in the story, the Mad Hatter. Using his skills for mesmerism, the Mad Hatter has committed many crimes, often themed around the book that inspired him, and his love of hats and headgear. Going so far as to implant his hats with mind-controlled chips to amplify his hypnosis skills, Above all other headwear, however, he covets Batman's distinctive cowl and will stop at nothing to acquire it. This is a fucking f joke character, dude. He's 4 foot 11, 115 pounds. He's literally a, a leprechaun, man. He's got blue eyes and red hair. Master of hypnotism and mind control. Obsessed with hats, especially one-of-a-kind items. Delusional schizophrenic with a fixation on Alice in Wonderland. And for 4 foot 11, I guess that's pretty stacked. 115. Okay, before we go through there, let's go through this door. Dude. Just... So you're gonna make me scan the plaque? Like... What do you want me to scan? There we go. Thomas and Martha Wayne. Thomas Wayne was a gifted surgeon and heir to the Wayne fortune. Dedicated to philanthropy as much as medicine, he and his wife Martha were well known and respected in Gotham. Martha Wayne shared her husband Tom, Thomas's charitable nature and was dedicated to her son Bruce's upbringing. She was well regarded in Gotham City social circles and helped host lavish charity balls at Wayne Manor. Their tragic murder at the hands of a desperate burglar, Joe Chill, in Gotham's crime alley shook the city to its core and led to years of urban blight. It also inspired their son Bruce to eventually become the Batman. Uh, blue and brown eyes, black and brown hair, six foot one and five foot eight. Six foot one, 180. That's, that's alright. And five foot eight, 135. That's pretty good. But not stacked, I would say. Neither of them are stacked. Highly gifted and well-trained surgeon, heir to the Wayne family fortune, dedicated philanthropist, mother to Bruce Wayne, wife to Thomas Wayne. Sacks. You're right. You were a doctor. 
Chapter 2, how can you turn your back on us? Quite easily if it happens. But not you, Stephen. You're different. I feel we have a connection. Really? You do? Of course. So they know that poison ivy has like pheromone shit. Yet they put her with a male psychologist. That's the most Batman universe shit ever. So obviously she's gonna escape. That's where her story's gonna end. Stop, please! I'm not important. I can't help you. You're lucky the boss don't want you hurt too bad. Said something about you being the perfect bait. Don't get it. You're nothing special. It's all right. This fucking guy just threw a chair at me, dude. WWE. I think that's the first time that's happened in the playthrough. I honestly forgot that they could do that. Thanks. Are you okay? I'm fine. I eat punks like these for breakfast. What were they doing? In you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? He went over there and started doing something. You ever seen Happy Gilmore, dude? I have no idea what they were doing. I thought the gardens would be the last place those escaped goons would be in. What's his name? Shooter McGavin is like. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. And he's like, you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? totally missed what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm guessing it's this. I was talking about eating pieces of shit for breakfast. I think that's more important. You can understand. Just for a Riddler trophy? Or do we need to save this doctor? I mean, looks like there's a bunch of electricity coming in here. What did he say to do? I'll stay here. The Joker's men may try to retake the generator. Ah, uh, I'm sure we need to scan this. That was a tough one.
What a fucking simp, Steven. So I've never actually done it in that order. I think you're supposed to come in here first, the Joker's supposed to say some shit about you and be like, fuck you, Batman. And then you have to follow the wires back to where we just were. But I did it out of order. So maybe we saw a unique cutscene there, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to call it there. We'll pick it up next time, we'll follow the Joker past this rubble. Looks like we just got to go through an air vent. And uh, we'll continue the story, babies. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and... Uh, Drink some goddamn water. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>